the second video in the Blended Online Learning Design series. This video will focus on how to create a learner-friendly digital classroom space. Now, just a quick reminder that as seen on screen, this is the second of 10 videos in this series. While we suggest watching the first three in order, after that you can continue in the sequence shown or jump to any video of interest. Now, let's briefly revisit the analogy that we created in the first video where we compared getting started in online teaching to creating a smoothie, and in that in both cases, you need certain basic ingredients just to get started. This video will focus on the first ingredient for online teaching, the online classroom. There are many reasons why using a digital classroom space is truly essential. But most important, of course, is having a central space for you and your students to turn to for announcements, assignment info, assessments, etc. This will support you and your students with the blended learning flow. So whether you're learning full time in the classroom, full time at home, or some blended mix in between, students will come to your digital classroom space and get a sense of what's happening day to day, week to week in your classes. Now, of course, it's important that you're working with a platform that really meets your needs. And in a moment, we're about to take a quick look at Seesaw and Google Classroom, which are the two platforms recommended by the school board. Both of these tools are wonderful for keeping you and your classes organized and connected. And you may even find that you want to use both. Now, many Lester B. Pearson teachers already know and love Seesaw for good reason. It's a very student-friendly and family-friendly tool. It allows for amazing interactive digital activities for students that help them demonstrate what they're learning, reflect on their learning, and revise as they go along. It really allows uh, for teachers and families to stay in, in regular communication and contact. And it's also a tool that works really well at the elementary level all the way up through the high school level. Similarly, Google Classroom is also well loved by Lester B. Pearson teachers for good reason. It's a very streamlined space that will certainly keep you and your students organized and it integrates beautifully with the rest of the Google suite. So that's an incredible bonus to, the, to working with Google Classroom. And then if you are someone who's curious about how you might use both together, Basically, you would just look for or create interactive activities using Seesaw and then link to them from an assignment in Google Classroom. And if you do this, you're basically using Google Classroom as your primary digital classroom space, and then you're using Seesaw as an additional tool. And it can be used that way, which is wonderful. Once you've chosen your online classroom, the next step is to ensure that the information you post there is as easily navigated by your students as possible. For many of them, online learning is a new experience and one they haven't done for any meaningful amount of time. So it's in everyone's best interest to ensure that the journey is as organized as possible for them. To that end, we recommend using a set of reusable schedule templates that you post on a regular basis to your online classroom feed or wall or whatever it's called. These templates will contain important information about the week, the month, the module to come. Things like time and dates of meetings, the associated links, content to learn, deliverables to hand in, and the due dates. But providing this on a regular basis for your students allows them to be aware of and on top of course expectations. Let's briefly look at a few examples of these at both the elementary and high school level. Our first example comes courtesy of an elementary school teacher, and it's a fairly simple template that covers a week. It's colorful, it's easy for elementary students to digest, it contains the times for the daily Zoom meeting, along with the subject that's going to be covered and a few other pieces of information pertaining to some remedial time and open class time. The next one, also from an elementary school teacher, is a little bit more sophisticated, containing links to a morning and afternoon meeting session, the morning being a check-in and the afternoon being uh, a review of the day's work. You'll notice that below that is a table containing the reading, writing, and math expectations for the day. But the teacher allows the students the autonomy to choose in what order they'd like to approach that work. Let me pause for a moment just to point out that if there are any templates you've seen or will see that interest you, you can download a copy by clicking on the empty version on the screen and then customize it as you see fit. Now let's take a look at some high school examples of templates. The first one comes courtesy of a calculus teacher 
who's broken up the class by weekly schedule and on the template indicates the classwork and homework expectations for each of the three classes that they teach. Let's compare that with our next example from a public health teacher where the focus is obviously not on the dates, even though due dates are provided. The focus is on the learning process, as the teacher is obviously encouraging their students to look at each module from the context of outcomes to be achieved, information to absorb, connections to create, and information to apply and reflect upon. Now, what style of template you use isn't important because it's a matter of personal preference. How do you envision breaking up your course? What matters is that these templates are posted on a regular basis to help your students remain organized and on top of the course schedule and expectations. The last example is just to provide one where the ethics teacher, in essence, posted the entire course at the beginning, providing a table of contents with links that the students could click on to drill down further into any given module. So in essence, the students are fully aware of the course expectations right from the get-go and can delve a little further if it interests them. Once you have a well-organized digital classroom space, it is important to go a step further and personalize it. Whatever you do in your regular classroom, let's see it in your digital classroom as well. Are you someone who hangs up a lot of posters or writes quotes up on the board? Well, you can do that in Seesaw in Google Classroom as well. Whatever personal touches you bring will only help your students stay connected with you and engaged with your class. This is especially important during periods of blended learning. Let's take a look together at a few examples. Bitmoji classrooms can be used for elementary and high school classes. Here's an example from a Lester B. Pearson colleague who has recreated her classroom as a digital learning environment. It's engaging, full of links and resources that students can click on and explore. Here's another example. As you can see here, it is possible to have a digital classroom space shared amongst colleagues. So if you work closely with other teachers, why not create your digital classroom together? Here is a quick example that shows how you can set up a Bitmoji class as a template for a daily agenda and related movie recommendations. You could also use these custom images to upload to Google Classroom or Seesaw. And if Bitmojis aren't quite your thing, you might consider using animated GIFs to express yourself and your subject, whether it's in Seesaw or in the banner of your Google Classroom space. You might consider starting the school year off with an animated welcome banner and then switching to a more topical banner related to the current course of study. These are meant to give you just a few quick ideas, but of course, there are many, many ways for you to add personal touches to your space in Seesaw or Google Classroom. So be sure to check out the curated resources we have organized for you related to these steps to set up a learner-friendly digital classroom space. Mike and I thank you for watching this video and we encourage you to explore the other videos in this series. If you happen to watch them in order, the next one will show you how to get the most out of your virtual class meetings. Thanks again and enjoy.